presenting company number two, and it's Elad Barak, co-founder and CEO Voyager. Uh, Elad, please take it away. Elad, by the way, is no stranger to Cannabis Investing Forum. Good to see you back. Hey, thanks. Thanks for having me and really interesting conversation so far. One second, I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me again. And we have a lot of uh, interesting updates to share. So I'm just going to dive into it and uh, then go to the Q&A. So we always like to start before uh, we talk about Voyagers, just to talk about the industry quickly and mention some mention one thing that all of us tend to kind of uh, forget, and that is the fact that when we look at the numbers of how many people actually consume cannabis, the majority of the population still doesn't consume cannabis. And when we want to go and look at the reasons why, uh, the main five reasons that come up are all around two kind of topics or issues. One is the control and dosing issue that people don't want to overdose, and two is people don't want to smoke and vape. And the Voyager solution answers both of those things. So our, our solution is a pocket-sized dispenser uh, for cannabis uh, or any other liquid to that form. But in cannabis, we have two products that we can work with. One is oil drops. Those are the same regular oils that you put sublingually and we are all familiar with, and beverage drops. And those are the drops that you can add to a beverage mix and get a cannabis beverage. And the way it works is very easy. You take our dispenser. This is a one-time purchase. You connect the pot to it. You dial in your dose, there's a small screen, so you can choose how many milligrams you want. You press the button and you get an accurate dose uh, to your beverage or again, sublingually if you want. It's simple, precise, portable, and gives you all the control you want as a cannabis consumer. Uh, this is all based on our patented, um, we're patent pending on our patent pending technology. And we've just received about a month and a half ago our first uh, review from the PCT, that's the international filing. Um, fairly well, really small comments. We already replied to it and updated also the American submission. So things are going really good from that perspective. Um, we also conducted a market research to kind of better understand if what we're doing really answers the challenges that consumers have. And we were very pleased to find out that when we presented this concept to uh, different consumers and we did a big market research with insights, they, they saw that it's precise, simple and portable. But above all, they gave our product value. And this is not related to the cost of the product, but actually to the fact that it answers the, the things they need. The other interesting part was the intent to purchase was very high amongst uh, current users. And the more, if you kind of divide the more the, uh, into smaller groups, the higher the consumption rate, the higher the interest to purchase this. And this is completely in line with other concepts that consumers are familiar with. Uh, so really good, great results. Now, the way our business works is we sell these pods empty to different cannabis companies. They fill it with their cannabis, they put their own brand in it, uh, and they sell through their distribution channels. And what we kept here in the financials is just to show that our pod cost goes into their COGS, uh, which still keeps them on a 60% uh, gross margin, which is what most uh, cannabis companies aim for. And, and with that in mind, I, I wanna take you to our financial projections. And this is looking on our first market that has 35 million uh, population. And within three years, we can reach $35 million revenue. Uh, this is using the assumption that we'll have six recreational partners with us selling those pods. And we make, again, from that uh, COGS, that's where we divide our revenue from. Now, the interesting part about Voyager is our scalability. Because even if you want to argue our numbers up or down a, a bit, the scalability is what matters here. The fact that we do not touch the plant means there's no border. So we can go to Canada, to the States, to Europe, or any other country we want. The fact that we're doing hardware means the higher the quantity, the lower the cost. This is not a plant or something else. In each local market, we work with local uh, partners, kind of like a franchise or franchisee to manage that local ecosystem. We have a very low setup cost for uh, different partners that want to work with us. We essentially developed our product to be fillable by the same machines that fill vape machines, just because most companies will have that already. And if not, it's a $50,000 device. And last but not least, we like work with local brands uh, to have quick organic growth. Now we're here raising a million and a half US dollars at a 6 million pre-money valuation. And we have two main goals with our raise. 
The first is to finalize our manufacturing capabilities so we can go to market and we expect to do that in half a year after we fundraise. And the second one is launch in the lead market. Now, once we finish fundraising, we can continue kind of rolling the, the capital and increasing our expansion within the markets. Just quickly from a milestone perspective, so we've passed Health Canada approval last year. We can start selling this product in Canada if we want. We've signed, uh, this is not updated, we have now a few partners that we signed here in Canada uh, to work together. We're working towards sensory testing with one of the licensed producers. So they're gonna test it with an expert panel and we're getting ready for full-scale manufacturing and being on the market um, later this year, early 2022. And last thing I wanna mention before we kind of sum this up is when we did our market research, we also asked consumers, where else do you see this used? And we were very happy to see that they all went to uh, very interesting fields such as vitamins, medication, caffeine, caffeine drops, essential oils. And what's important to mention here is that we're starting in the cannabis industry, but again, we're a hardware company and our technology can apply also in health and wellness and pharmaceuticals and psychedelics. So we definitely see this going to other places. Uh, so with that, I'll leave it for questions. Thanks. What a pro, good work. So who would like to start? Who would like to ask the first question? Okay, Dr. John Thompson, you have the floor. John, you're on mute. Unmute, there we go, can you hear me now? That's good. Okay, good. Um, hey, good presentation, I really enjoyed it. Uh, appreciate that. Um, so can I ask you, what is your, are you going to wholesale these to uh, the various uh, companies and, and what's that purchase price? I didn't see it. It was at $5. Yeah. So, so the idea is that instead of trying to have our own brand and once we prove yeah. that this delivery method is successful, have people trying to compete with us, we want to just own the platform. So okay. we want to work with the other brands um, for the cost of the pot itself or the companies. It varies depending on the milligrams they uh, they want to put inside, and we have a way to kind of control and monitor that, so they can't just you know say they want to put 100 milligrams and then put a thousand. But we vary the price according to that, and we've been through the process with a few licensed producers here in Canada, and they're all good with the price. What are your gross margins? Our gross margins are around 60 percent as well. And have you sold any of these yet? No, so we're pre-revenue. Uh, we have a few uh, deals lined up, as I mentioned, for once we, we have the product. Um, right now, we need to finalize our manufacturing capabilities, so we still need to finish the molding. Why not just use a tincture uh, to dose? Why not just use a tincture dropper? Yeah, sure. So, you know, that, that question comes sometimes. Uh, so here in Canada, I would mention that it's out of regulations. You can't have any more of those... Uh, droppers or syringes, you can actually only have what's called a dosing cap. Uh, but regardless of that, we see a lot of uh, abilities to do other stuff for product. And it's kind of like a lot of people will use a vape pen and not a regular vape, not only because now you're not smoking, also the convenience that is missing with just dealing with dirty stuff like dry leaf or oil. Uh, but we divided the cannabis that's digestible to kind of three product lines. There's oils, soft chills, and edibles. And you can see that only Voyager allows you to one, really customize your dose because you can't really do that with a dropper, not to the level that we allow you. And then not even the level of accuracy. So we have less than 3% error, meaning that if you want to consume three milligrams, you'll get exactly three milligrams. There's no chance you'll take five accidentally and not understand why your experience is wrong. So does the $5 include the pod and the, uh, and the dosage unit or is it, or are those separate? So, so again, we're saying, yeah, that the, that $5 is all of their cost. Our pot is inside that. That includes their oil and everything they need. Uh, the dispenser itself will be $20 to the consumers and we're not planning on making any profit from the dispenser. So the dispenser is a one-time purchase. It has all the electronics, the battery, the power, um, you know, all the smarts that needs to be done. And the pot is essentially a very sophisticated bottle with a dispensing mechanism that we developed. Okay. Moving on to the next question. Um, David Cram. Yes, hey, um, great presentation. Really quick question for me. This is in terms of competitive analysis. 
who are your competitors in this space as you see them and how do you believe you are different and or better? Yeah, so so it's very interesting. I think for us, the competition is either digestible products. There's nobody else that we know that does any dispensing mechanisms. Um, so essentially, it's those three groups, right? Now, we believe that, for example, on the beverage side, a lot of companies went with this approach of let's do ready to drink, but nobody thought maybe that's not the right approach. You know, a lot of people will buy coffee, but nobody will buy it in a can. They will buy it in grains, right, and beans. And the same goes to cannabis. Maybe you just need to dispense it to yourself. It's cheaper, it's more convenient, and it's actually to your wanting. So we're competing with them. We're competing with people that want to have capsules or tablets, but don't want to get exactly five milligrams. They want to be able to say, now I need three milligrams, and tomorrow I need to take seven. Um, and we're competing with the oil. So we're kind of going to, to have to believe to take in consumers for all of them. Do you view Pax Labs as a direct competitor to what you're trying to do? I view them as our, one of our bigger options for an exit. <laughs> Love it. Okay, okay. Carol, you got <laughs> but, one more but question. They do Carol? vaping. Sorry, sorry if I can just finish that. Sorry, but they sure, do go vaping. Ahead. No problem. Go ahead, Carol. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say we, we, they do vaping. Okay, so, um, we do the... Excellent presentation. Thank you. Um, do you? Does have any any patent uh, issue or in process? And is your exit strategy and the terms, please? Okay. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear the question. What is your exit strategy? What are the terms? And if you have any patent in process. Yeah, so um, I'll, I'll start with the easy one. That's the patent. We submitted our patent in the States. Um, it's actually dated back to July 2019. Uh, we're patent pending at the moment. We also submitted a PCT, an international patent. We've received the first review. It was really good. We answered a bit. And we've also replied also to the US uh, Patent Office to kind of give them those updates. Our patent is already published on Google if you want to search it without those small updates. Uh, but altogether, I would say it's going really well, and, and I believe it will help us protect our products, mainly so when we are going to the medical field. Uh, from an exit perspective, right now we're a private company. As I mentioned, I think there will be a few exits within the cannabis industry, either with the big cannabis companies here in Canada or the MSOs, but also potential companies, I think, like PAX, that understand this business and know what it means to, to own an ecosystem. And where were PAX was when they started? Nobody's doing this. We're the first one building this ecosystem. And even if you have a few other ecosystems eventually like this, the first mover advantage is very important in an ecosystem where you can kind of block competition. Okay. Elad, sorry, we have to wrap it up. That was a great presentation, by the way. Thank Speaking you. only for myself. <laughs>